One of the things I love most about doing this show is watching the mainstream media play catch up on important topics and trends driving the core of American politics. And one of the reasons that this occurs is because the media, and the New York Times in particular, has spent the last four years catering to the wants and needs of its upper middle class white suburbanite subscriber base, and even forgot how to cover corruption on the Democratic side. Well, now that it seems that Trump is on his way out, they've dusted off their old notebooks and decided to actually do some work for a change. Lo and behold, they've come across just how deep the corruption goes within Joe Biden's incoming national security cabinet and even uncovered some new stunning details. Now, we've already told you in depth here about West, Ec Exo West Exec Advisors. That is the firm co-founded by Anthony Blinken and Michelle Flournoy. Blinken is the likely incoming Secretary of State. He's already been named by Joe Biden. Flournoy is one of the top contenders for Secretary of Defense. Their firm peddled influence for Fortune 500 companies over the last four years, seeking to navigate Washington, including Google, one of the major defense contractors, and several others. At one point, their website literally advertised helping major companies navigate the U.S.-China relationship in order to expand access there. But it seems after Blinken got nominated that they decided to remove that unseemly little detail from their website. Well, the Times now reveals that Blinken and Flournoy are advisors to a private equity firm called Pine Island Capital, which on November 16th, two weeks after Election Day, filed for an initial public offering. Included in their filing documents is an absolutely astonishing turn of phrase, which amounts to outright corruption. Let's listen closely. The fund manager writes, quote, Pine Island Capital Partners believes it has extensive connections to industry leaders, unusual access to information, and often unique insights into specific companies, programs, and overall market dynamics. Adding, quote, the reputations and networks of Pine Island Capital Partners team, both individually and collectively, will ensure exposure to a significant number of proprietary opportunities. So let's break that down in plain English. You have the leading contenders for Secretary of State and Secretary of Defense. They form an influence peddling operation. Those two then sign on to a hedge fund. That hedge fund raises $218 million to take advantage of, quote, new opportunities right after Election Day. Now, who's going to create those new opportunities? The advisors themselves, whom the fund manager specifically tout as a competitive advantage to public investors. You see, it's a circular scheme. And the best part is it's totally legal. It's also corruption 101. This is the legal way of paying somebody up front to deliver for you or your company after you get into office. It's just a more sophisticated way of handing somebody a briefcase full of cash. And the press attention here seems to be working. Flournoy has yet to be made a lock for Secretary of Defense. Her business partner is already Secretary of State. But other candidates are being proposed, including one former general, Lloyd Austin. Now, the potential pick was praised high and wide because Austin would be the first black Secretary of Defense in our nation's history. That's great. There's just one problem, though. Guess who also is an advisor to Pine Island Capital Partners? You guessed it, Mr. Lloyd Austin himself. These people never lose. They know that you don't always hit the jackpot with one or two advisors. That's why you hire everyone in town. That way, when someone like Biden comes along to the presidency, they know they have a lock on the profits and on the contracts before he's even in the door. Let's say Mr. Austin is somehow denied his post along with Flournoy. Who's waiting in the wings? Well, it's former DHS Secretary Jay Johnson, another person who would be the first black Secretary of Defense. That's great, right? Yeah, well, instead of just working for a company that will seek to rake in Wall Street profits from these policy, he also just happens to work for one of the companies themselves. Johnson is a board member of Lockheed Martin Corporation, one of the largest defense contractors on the planet. And this is what I mean when I say that these people always win. There is always an inside man or somebody who is standing by to snap to and deliver once in government. When I warned here repeatedly that electing Joe Biden and quote unquote going back to normal is a bitter pill to swallow, this is exactly what I meant. 
over at agriculture. Biden is reportedly thinking about literally just tapping Obama's former agricultural secretary. At the CIA, he's thinking of putting forward Obama's former acting CIA director, Mike Morrell. Or his alternative to that is Tom Donilon, who is a deputy national security advisor to Obama and coincidentally the brother of one of Biden's closest aides. It's the same story in almost every agency of our government. Biden is assembling the Democratic dream team of those who architected, profited from, and brought about the populist backlash of 2016. It's as if he truly has learned nothing. But it's also not surprising from someone who has worked in Washington for the last 50 years. All right, up next, Ryan and I are going to talk more about Biden's cabinet picks. That's when Rising continues.